Welcome back to the last and final episode of our series on water meter sizing, selection, and installation. In part 13 today, we're going to review your answers from the quiz that we gave you in part 12 and go through an in-depth analysis of how and why we selected particular meters for those particular applications. Let's dive into it. All right, it's time to see what you've learned throughout this series on meter sizing and selection. Let's see if you've put your skills to use. In application number two, we looked at a meter that would run between six tenths and three gallons per minute, 18% of the time, and then between 110 and 160 gallons per minute, about 82% of the time. If we go through that four step process, let's see what meter I would select. First step is to look at that high side, right? If we look at that, our application runs between 110 and 160 gallons per minute. If I look at a two inch disc meter, I would see that that would fit my application. Its operating range goes all the way up to 170 gallons per minute. It's under 160, right? It would fit fine. However, if I look at the max continuous duty, it's 100 gallons per minute. In this case, I would not put this meter in that application. 82%, when I say most of the time, I would look at that and say that's probably most of the time. I would think that we would overrun this meter and burn this meter out over time if I were running it at these high flow applications 82% of the time, even though it has an operating range of 170 gallons per minute. Let's analyze an inch and a half turbine meter. It fits my operating range, goes all the way up to 200 gallons per minute, and its max continuous duty is right there at 160 gallons per minute. Now here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to oversize a meter. In this case, I'm right at 160 gallons per minute. And you might say, you know what? It's kind of right at the borderline. Should I upsize to the next meter? Realize that the design of these meters are conservative, meaning that the 160 gallons per minute, there's probably a little bit of upside that you can go there. But if you're right around 160, let's say between 150, 160 is your top side. Don't look at this and say, I should upsize this meter. Don't do that. Go ahead and use this 160 gallons per minute. If that's how you know that the application runs, you would be fine with this meter. Let's look at a two inch compound meter. The two inch compound meter has the right operating range all the way up to 200 gallons per minute. And its max continuous duty is at 170 gallons per minute. So I'm well within this application. A two inch ultrasonic would also fit. Its operating range goes all the way up to 160 gallons per minute. And then its max continuous duty is the same. And again, I wouldn't, if I know my application doesn't run over 160 gallons per minute, I would not upsize. I would use this meter for that application. Let's go to the second step. If we analyze the low flow capabilities and consider the extended low flow as well, the inch and a half turbine meter, its operating range goes only down to four gallons per minute, right? And even its extended flow only goes down to two and a half gallons per minute, meaning that anything below two and a half gallons per minute, I would not be collecting the correct revenue. So I'm not going to use an inch and a half turbine for this application. A two inch compound meter on the other hand has an operating range going all the way down to a half gallon per minute and even extended flow going lower at a quarter of a gallon per minute. It perfectly fits this type of application. The two inch ultrasonic has an operating range down to one and a half gallons, but it's extended low flow giving me 97% accurate goes all the way down to a half gallon per minute. I would choose to use this meter because of its extended low flow. So now I'm looking at a two inch compound meter and a two inch ultrasonic. Let's go to step number three. Step number three says, let's analyze that two inch compound meter to make sure it fits the compound low flow principle. The guidelines say that a compound meter should be between five and 25% operation on the low flow side of the meter. So if you look at the crossover on the product data sheet, it will show you that the crossover on this two inch compound is at 12 gallons per minute, meaning that five to 25% is going to happen on anything below 12 gallons per minute. In this case, it's going to be between the 0.6 and three gallons per minute. The 18% is within that five to 25%. So this is going to be okay for a two inch compound. So the end result is I'm going to choose either the two inch compound meter or the two inch ultrasonic for this particular application. My hope is you chose the same. If not, put your comments below regarding the meter that you chose for this application. All right, let's walk through that process again. Application number three says I've got 
225 gallons all the way up to 415 gallons per minute, 90% of the time. And then I'm running between 15 and 90 gallons per minute, 10% of the time. I would look at these particular three applications. The three inch turbo meter meets the capabilities right on operating range and max continuous duty. Three inch compound meter also meets that as well as the ultrasonic, the three inch ultrasonic meter, right? All three of them meet this on the high side of the operating range as well as the max continuous duty. So we're gonna take these three meters and we're gonna look at the low flow capabilities of these meters. A three inch turbine meter has an operating range down to five gallons per minute. That will capture all the revenue that I need for this application, even with extended low flow down to four gallons per minute. The compound meter meets that as well. It goes down to half gallon per minute. And then the ultrasonic meets that as well, going all the way down to three quarters of a gallon. If we look at the compound meter and analyze the compound low flow principle here, here's what happens. That crossover is at 12 gallons per minute. Anything below 12 gallons per minute is going to run on the low flow side. Here's the problem. According to the compound low flow principle, I'm going to have less than 5% running on the low flow side. In this case, if it's at 12 gallons per minute, I'm hardly ever going to run on the low flow side. Meaning for this application, a compound meter is not the right meter to use because I'm not using its low flow capabilities at all, right? So I would choose, in this case, if we go to last step, what meters are we gonna choose from the ones that we have left? I'm going to choose a three inch turbine meter or a three inch ultrasonic for this application. My hope is through your analysis, you've chosen the same two meters. If not, make a comment in the comment section below and let me know why not. The last application is this. I'm running between one and a quarter and five gallons per minute 70% of the time, and then between 15 and 140 gallons per minute 30% of the time. Two inch disc meter, inch and a half turbine meter, two inch compound, and a two inch ultrasonic all fit this application, right? They all have the capabilities to read the high side of this and the max continuous duty also fits. Looking at the low flow considerations for this, this is where it changes a bit. The two inch meter I may possibly rule out for this because you know, its operating range is down to two and a half gallons per minute. Now, if I look at the extended low flow, it's close, right? The extended low flow is at one and a half gallons per minute. It doesn't fit this perfectly, but it's pretty close. So that's a, that's a questionable. The inch and a half turbine meter would not meet this application because anything below the two and a half gallons per minute, I'm not going to be collecting the right revenue. And it runs at those low flows 70% of the time. So I would definitely rule out the inch and a half turbine meter. Two inch compound fits the application very well on that low flow side, it has capability all the way down to a half gallon per minute on the normal operating range and a quarter of a gallon on the extended low flow. The two inch ultrasonic meter on the other hand has that operating range down to 1.5 gallons per minute. And I might look at that and go, oh, okay, that doesn't fit. But if I look at my extended low flow, the extended low flow of that two inch ultrasonic goes all the way down to a half gallon per minute. I would choose that as an option. In step number three, looking at that crossover at 12 gallons per minute, on the low flow percentage, it's going to be greater than 25% of the time on this two inch compound meter that I'm going to be operating on that side. Remember the sweet spot for a compound meter is the low flow side of the meter to be operating between five and 25% of the time. In this case, for the two inch compound meter, I'm going to be operating much more than 25% of the time on the low flow side. Hence, I probably wouldn't choose the compound meter for this. This may be one because of its low flow capabilities most of the time, I might actually consider a disc meter. So my final analysis of this application really is this. I would potentially select the two inch disc meter based on the fact that I'm going to collect most of the revenue and then the sweet spot for that meter fits this application probably better. The two inch compound meter, all the numbers work but I wouldn't use it because I'm going to be operating too much on the low flow side of that meter. On the other hand, the two inch ultrasonic meter could fit this application well because it doesn't really have a low flow side. It's going to measure across this range, right? From half gallon per minute all the way up to 160 and fit this application. So in this case, I would choose either the two inch disc meter or the two inch ultrasonic meter. If you follow along with this series, leave a comment below and let me know what you've learned. 
Thanks again for following along.